Hello and welcome to this Python tutorial. Today I will be showing you how to use the index function. Now the index function is used to find the position of an item or items within a given selection. And it's also inbuilt within the Python environment so there's no need to import modules such as math or numpy or pandas or anything like that. It's all inbuilt. What I'll be doing is I'll be running you through a few different examples using lists because that's a really easy place to start. And then I'll be showing you a few pitfalls after I've done, gone through these examples. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm going to start with a simple list of a shopping bag. And what we have here is five items within the shopping bag. We have bread, milk, tea bags, sugar and eggs. And we're going to be using the index to find the index function to find the index of sugar within this list. So what I've done is I've called the name of the variable, shop, the name of the list here called shopping bag. And I've given called the index function by typing in shopping bag dot index. And then within the brackets, I've typed in what I the what I want to get the position of within that list. So in this case, we're finding the index of sugar. So I've typed in sugar, and I've copied the format uh, put by putting it in quotation marks, like it is in the list. And so I've also equated this to giving this the variable index underscore sugar, so that when I print it, I can print index underscore sugar, and I will get the position of sugar within this list. So if I run it, I'll get three as my output. And what three is, is the position here within this list. And remember the lists start at zero. So if I start at zero and go on three, we should get to sugar. So let's test this out. So bread is zero, milk is one, tea bags is two, and sugar is three. Cool. You can also um, get rid of this middle variable step altogether by just typing in print shopping bag calling the name of the list dot index and then putting sugar in quotation marks and then printing all that and you'll also get three here so there's two different ways already of calling the index function just by using from the first example so let's move on to the second example where we have multiple lists. In this case, we have row and col. Row as A, B, C, D, E as strings and col as numbers 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. And we're going to call the index of both of those together. So if we type in row dot index and then call a value, we'll get the position of that value and then comma col dot index and we'll and type in a, a number here. And if we equate that in this case to a variable called index underscore row col, and then we print that, we will get the position of row, the row and column or col in this case. And this could be like coordinates for a grid or a graph or anything like that. Awesome. Okay, next example. So in this example, we really have, this is called random list, and we really do have a random list here. We have zebra in a string, we have 100 in number, 100 in text, 4.8, date is a string, pi to five decimal places, and a date as a date format. And I'm just here to show you that whatever format you use, you can use index to call it. So let's just run all of these, all of these items in a list. Zebra, date, pi to five decimal places, 100 as both a number and a text value. And we can print all of these. And I've also got int1, so we can just decipher what each one is. So int1, according random list index one, which we'll call our zebra. Round list two, which we'll call our date as a date. So let's just, actually, let's just start off with those. Here we've got int one, zebra, zero, worked. Int six for our date also worked. And let's do uh, the other three. 
just to prove that it works for everything. Here, so we've got our pi to five decimal places, worked, pulled it, got the position. Also, number as a string and number as a number, also pulled those as well. So it works for all different data types. Awesome. Let's go back to our first example. In this case, I've just copied it down here. We've got our shopping bag again, back to our shopping bag. And we're gonna call something that's not in the list. And let me just raise this back out because we should get an error message. So we've got our, in our shopping bag, we've got bread, milk, tea bag, sugar, and eggs. And if we type in shopping bag index, and we call something that's not in this list, and we give it a variable, and we print it again. So what happens when we print it? What happens when we print it? Well, we should get an error message. And here we go, on our right, we get this error message. It's a value error. And the, the error itself is beef, which is what we indexed, is not in the list. So if you try and index something that's not in the list, you will get a value error. Cool. So another thing you've got to look out for is we've gone through the value error if it's not called properly. Also, remember, things may be spelt a bit differently. So instead of having tea bags with the S, you may have just tea bag. Or you may have you know, things spelt differently. Some people spell things a bit differently to other people. So that's just something to be wary of. Also, if I just use this example of the shopping bag down here, I'll let you know that if you put a space here or here in the list for the item, or if you put a space when you're calling it ac accidentally, not on purpose, and then you call it, you will also get a value error. So imagine going through all that code for looking for a space that's in the wrong place. So just be careful of that and try and get rid of that space as you're writing it because going back through and searching for it will be an absolute pain. Okay, so that is all I'm gonna show you in this tutorial about the index. I think it's a really great introduction to it and please do subscribe to my channel and share it if you think someone may benefit from it. Thank you very much for watching.